hello friends welcome to this next video on complex analysis in the last video what we have done just let us recall what we have done till now we had started with uh, functions from complex plane to complex plane right we had functions from complex plane to complex plane we have defined these functions then we studied about limits continuity differentiability and analyticity okay so there are there are two uh, two things uh, why we are going from here to here okay one is general in real analysis also after studying the continuity of the functions we study the differentiability and the second one was one is simple this is a, a obvious uh, step after continuity differentiability is the obvious step and the other reason was that we wanted to know which functions in uh, complex analysis they respect the uh, complex structure of the numbers right of the complex numbers we have yet not seen what is that criteria but this thing we, we will come to know we, we will use analyticity for defining this thing right so what, what do we mean by this thing uh, the meaning is that suppose I have z is equal to 5 plus 2 iota and I have something f of z which does like this 5 square plus 2 square so what it is doing it is uh, treating the real part separately and imaginary part of the complex number separately but we want functions which you know uh, does not uh, which uh, which don't treat the uh, real and imaginary parts of the complex number separately it means that they are respecting the complex structure of the complex number okay that criteria will come from the analyticity of the functions that we will do later okay right now okay after studying limit continuity differentiability and analyticity let us look at some of the fundamental functions okay which we will use again and again in whole of the analysis complex analysis the obvious choice first is polynomial functions okay we know that in case of real analysis also polynomial functions are the simplest functions to study and the second obvious choice is rational functions okay so let us and then trigonometric functions logarithmic function exponential function and so on so i'll start with polynomial functions the the lecture is quite simple but still for the sake of completeness we will do it right so what is the polynomial function so what we are doing we are going to study polynomial functions so what is the polynomial function a function of the form a naught plus a one z plus a two z square plus a three z cube and so on plus a n z raised to power n where a i's are complex numbers and a n is not equal to zero this is called a polynomial of degree n okay the highest this coefficient should be non-zero of course for it for this polynomial to have degree n right so this is a polynomial function so the one thing uh, special about polynomial is we can see that we have already uh, discussed this thing that these functions are analytical analytic function everywhere these functions are analytic functions everywhere okay everywhere in the complex uh, function so the polynomial function is the nicest function possible from complex plane to complex plane so these functions are entire functions we have defined entire function a function is said to be an entire function if it, it is analytic everywhere in the complex plane so polynomial functions are analytic everywhere in the complex plane so they are entire functions this is the first nicest thing about uh, polynomial functions right so let us uh, look at some uh, next thing after studying that the function is differentiable everywhere we want to you know make the find out the roots of the fun polynomial function so suppose I have I'll just give you an example if I had this x square plus 1 is equal to 0 okay in this is a function f is a function from r to r so in that case I know that this function this particular equation x square plus 1 is equal to 0 it does not has is it does not have any solution in real line okay we know that roots of this uh, equation are x is equal to plus minus eta right so this was the reason that we extended our 
number system R to C. This was the main reason because the equations with coefficients in R they do, they does not they don't have uh, uh, they possibly don't have roots in R. That's why we have extended our complex uh, our real system to complex system. Now suppose I have a equation with roots in uh, with coefficient in complex plane. Suppose I have this thing, 12 plus 10 z minus 4 z cube minus uh, sorry minus 4 z square minus 2 z cube is equal to 0 where z is a complex number right so you can actually see that uh, this is the equation of order 3 you can just hit and uh, use it and trial and you will find out that z is equal to minus 1 is actually satisfying this equation right so you have you can just make the roots that uh, you can divide it with z is e z plus 1 and you will get a second order equation which you can again factorize so you can easily factorize this function as minus 2 into z minus 2 into z plus 1 into z plus 3 is equal to 0 so clearly z is equal to 2 z is equal to minus 1 z is equal to minus 3 they are the roots of course these are real roots but every real number is a complex number right so when the equations the degree of the equation is less then okay we can use the hit and trial method and somehow factorize that thing and we we can just know whether the complex roots or real roots exist or not now suppose i give you this equation z is power 6 plus z is power 4 plus 4 ita z square minus 4 z my, uh, plus 4 minus 3 i eta is equal to 0 okay so this is the equation with coefficient from complex numbers right so i i am asking whether you can factorize this thing or not so you don't even know whether this equation has a complex root or not right so you that uh, then you you can think of okay we had to extend our real system right to complex system because equations does not some equations they don't have root here right now what if you have to go again from complex system to some another system and then to some another system and so on it will keep on going right so it is a scary thing right? then this fellow goss in uh, in the year 1799 he came and he said okay don't be scared don't be scared i'll have help you okay don't be scared so what he did in his uh, PhD thesis he proved a fundamental theorem of algebra fundamental theorem of algebra he proved fundamental theorem of algebra okay and this theorem tells you that you don't have to extend your uh, number system from complex system everything every equation with roots in coefficient uh, roots with coefficients in complex numbers coefficients as complex numbers they have roots in the complex plane right so let us see what is that fundamental theorem of algebra Gauss has given this fun fundamental theorem of algebra in the year 1799 this theorem says that every non-constant polynomial every non-constant polynomial with complex coefficients has at least one zero in C has at least one zero in C okay so what does that mean it means that suppose I have this function uh, f of z is equal to z6 plus z5 plus z4 plus i eta is equal to 0 then I am sure that this equation has a complex root because of the fundamental theorem of algebra given by Gauss so I can write it something like z minus a where a is a complex number into a polynomial of degree 5 is equal to 0 again applying the fundamental theorem of algebra I know that this polynomial of degree 5 has a 0 in complex plane so I can write it z minus a into z minus b into a polynomial of degree 4 is equal to 0 and then I can keep on going uh, like this so I have z minus a z minus b z minus c into polynomial of degree 3 is equal to 0 and then I have z minus a into z minus b into z minus c into z minus d into polynomial of degree 2 is equal to 0 and so on like this I can factorize my whole polynomial so uh, if the degree of the polynomial is 4 then I have 4 linear factors here is equal to 0 and if the degree of polynomial is 5 then I have 5 linear factors and hence 5 roots so this theorem tells you that if you have a polynomial of degree n 
right then it has n complex roots okay in complex plane so you don't have to keep on extending from we had extended from r to c but now gauss has solved our problem and he has told us that you are done here you don't have to extend you do, don't have to keep on extending your number system to have roots of the equation so this is the one thing about the polynomial function so what we have learned about polynomial function the first thing is they are entire functions okay and the second thing is a polynomial of degree n has n complex roots okay so these are the two things which we have learned about complex uh, polynomials with complex coefficients so the last thing is let us look at this thing suppose we want to uh, we have this polynomial f of z is equal to to, uh, suppose we have this I write it P of Z P stands for polynomial P of Z is equal to 12 plus 10 Z minus 4 Z square minus 2 Z cube suppose you have this polynomial and somebody asks you to write it in the form of instead of Z you have to write it as the powers of Z minus 1 how, how will you do that it's very simple you can write Z is equal to Z minus 1 plus 1 I can write like this now what I can do, I can call it something else. So this is nothing but p plus 1, right? Not p because p we are already using. So like, let us write it as zeta plus 1, right? So I can write p of z as p of zeta plus 1 is equal to 12 plus 10 z is zeta plus 1 minus 4 z square is zeta plus 1 square minus 2 this is zeta plus 1 q now you can use the formula a plus b whole cube here and you can use the formula a plus b whole square and you can do some manipulation and you will get it as 16 minus 4 zeta minus 10 zeta square minus 2 zeta q so basically what we have obtained we obtained that p of z is equal to 16 minus 4 z minus 1 minus 10 z minus 1 square minus 2 z minus 1 q so this is what we have obtained right okay now note this thing now you have to note this thing note notice you can note that the first coefficient suppose i am writing it as p of z as d naught plus d1 z minus 1 plus d2 z minus 1 square plus d3 z minus 1 q then this d naught is how much is d naught d naught is 16 you can actually ch check that if you put z is equal to 1 here what you will get 12 plus 10 minus 4 minus 2 so how much is this this is 16 right so this 16 d naught is equal to 16 is nothing but the value of the polynomial at the point 1 right now see the coefficient of z minus 1 d1 is how much that is coming out to be minus 10 uh, sorry minus 4 so this is equal to minus 4 and you can check that minus 4 is nothing but this is derivative of this polynomial at 1 right computed at 1 then d2 that is coming out to be minus 10 d2 is minus 10 coefficient of z minus 1 square you can see that this is nothing but this is p double dash at first uh, 1 divided by 2 factorial and then d3 that is coming out to be minus 2 you can actually verify that this is nothing but p uh, triple dash at 1 divided by 3 factorial right so we have for, from this particular example we, we can see that if i want to write my p3z in terms of z minus 1 then it is nothing but p3 at 1 okay plus p da 3 dash I should not write 3 because I am not writing 3 earlier. So I have this P3 of Z is equal to P of 1 plus P dash of 1 by 1 factorial into Z minus 1 plus P double dash of 1 by 2 factorial into Z minus 1 whole square plus P triple dash into 1 upon 3 factorial Z minus 1 whole cube and so on. I can keep on writing. In, in this particular example, if uh, the polynomial is of degree 3, therefore fourth derivative onwards they are 0. So I have this particular representation of the polynomial. So this is not limited to this particular example. This is in general true. So what we have, we have given a polynomial of degree n, given a polynomial of degree n, P z is a polynomial of degree n and you are given a point z naught, then you can always write p n of z okay n stands for the degree of the polynomial as 
pn at z0 plus first derivative of the polynomial at z0 into z minus z0 plus second derivative of the polynomial at z0 into by 2 factorial into z minus z0 whole square plus so on you can keep on doing like this till nth derivative of the polynomial divided by n factorial into z minus z raised to power n so this is called taylor form of the polynomial around the point z0 this is called taylor form of the polynomial around the point z0 right and if z0 is zero then this is called maclaurin form of the polynomial okay so this is the, these are the things we have learned about the polynomial function so we have learned that they are entire functions then we have seen that they have roots a, a polynomial of degree n has n complex roots okay and then we have learned how to write the taylor form of the polynomial okay so these are the things about polynomial functions which we will use in the course again and again okay in the next video we will study the rational functions thank you